Hello, I'm Mark New with CGTN. I am here in Mountain View, California. I'm actually at NASA Ames Research Center. Uh, this is part of NASA, and what they have here is a lot of companies that they work with to collaborate to um, create innovative products. And I'm here with one company called Vertigris, and I'm joined by the CEO, Mark Chung, who's also the co-founder. Thanks for joining us, Mark. Thanks, Mark. Um, you are headed, you're one of the startups that is heading to the CIIE, which is the China International Import Expo. Uh, excited about that? I'm very excited. Yeah, it should be a very big show. So, uh, hundred thousands of companies actually go. I mean, it's only the second year, but uh, this is your first time going, right? Definitely, yeah. This is uh, the first time in Shanghai. Well, not first time in Shanghai, but first time we're actually going to be going to Shanghai and showing off our products and capabilities there. You've heard a lot about it, or a little bit about it? Or? A little bit, uh, just, just that it's a really big deal. Uh, so that's made us pretty excited about the opportunity, and uh, you know, we're looking forward to it. And now we want to show uh, what your product um, that you're going to be showing. Uh, we're in the lab right now, so they're working on a lot of things and testing things here. What do we have here right now? And you can show us a little about the parts, and then we will see what the final product is. Sure, sure. So uh, Vertigris, um, we're, we're an artificially intelligent energy metering system. Uh, what you're seeing here is a lab set up to calibrate. So one of the very important things of our system is that it has to be super accurate. Um, we pr provide really, really high frequency data, and that high frequency data is used by the most mission critical systems in the world to make sure that systems are functional. So what you see here is just kind of like this long chain of calibration uh, measured by a very precise, super expensive uh, system. This um, test rig configures and maps all of these to match to this um, golden uh, system here. And um, these are actually like uh, you know production quality CTs that go in, um, and then there's two a other CT is a what? Oh, sorry, <laughs> yeah, current transformer, uh, which is actually not the same thing as a standard current transformer, which would be something like this. Uh, what we have is something much smaller and lighter, and we've introduced a, a kind of an innovative way of of getting to this size and form factor by cutting magnets in small places and putting air gaps. So that's. That's essentially what gives us this really precision instrument. And it all comes together in this package here, right? This is the main, uh, we call it a smart IoT meter, is that right? That's right, that's right. So this is kind of the, uh, the computing central brain and the, um, the, the communication uh, pieces. So all of these um, smart CTs will go into this meter. Um, and there's kind of two form factors. You can be in this really small form factor um, or you could be in a much larger form factor, um, but they all go into this gateway, and you know when you take the lid off, it essentially looks like this. So we read voltage here, and then we read two channels of these smart CTs. And in simplest terms, you know what can this do for any kind of company, perhaps? Right? Well, in, in the simplest terms, this, the basic functionality of this is to create a, a really precision digital twin of your electrical infrastructure. So if you're thinking about like, you know, a large fulfillment center or a manufacturing facility, uh, for example, you want to know exactly what your electricity is doing and throughout the entire building, this will map all of it and create a digital layer. Um, from that, you know, it's kind of like this, the, the iPhone uh, platform, if you will. Um, there's all these apps that you can layer on top of it. So we have energy management software apps, which I can show you guys later, and we have different kinds of automation applications that can sit on it. But this is sort of, sort of like turning your factory into an, an, an iPhone platform. Okay. Uh, and we want to see how you actually hook it up. And I think you've got it right around the corner yep. in this uh, building, in this research park. If we walk around over here, we can see how it's installed. Yep. And there are other companies that do these sort of things, but uh, would you gather to say that yours is the form factor smaller, or are, you know how do you, how are you better than those other companies? Yeah, I mean, there's several things that make us really unique compared to our our competitors. I think when we first started off, um, we were primarily an algorithms company, uh, but one of the biggest challenges we had on the algorithm side was getting really good data. So when we looked at the marketplace to try and get this, it was really hard to get quality precision data. Um, and install it super easily. So we just kind of started from scratch, basic principles, and designed this very, very lightweight, non-intrusive sensoring technology, which, um, as you can see here, it just kind of daisy chains together. Um, and, and what that allows us to do is to have a very clean, very easy, quick installation. Typically, this is done in under 30 minutes. 
And once it's all hooked up, it's connected to the system. And the system itself is wireless. So it's either 4G, or LTE, 4G LTE or Wi-Fi. It gets it out to the cloud. So the data is like, it's kind of plug and play. You know, you put it in, you get precision data, and it comes right out. OK. And then um, that's the hardware side of it. Mm -hmm. Of course, the software is very important. And we can see, in the end, but what, what, what you get out of hooking it up to your own box. I mean, this is primarily done for larger companies, larger organizations, as opposed to somebody's home, right? That's right, yeah. Well, you know, it kind of started off as a pet project for my house, but I think, um, you know, what we found was that really energy-dense companies um, have the greatest energy management need. So um, the first thing we did was just sort of try and build some applications for that marketplace. Um, and I'll show you a couple here. So... Um, um, Kind of what I have here are it's it's all in the cloud. All the software is in the cloud. Um, this uh, ad administrative panel, what you see here, is actually that system that you just saw is being displayed here. So um, from the software, you can do all sorts of things like um, change any kind of labels that we might have attached to it. You know, our algorithms will try and automatically attach labels, uh, but you can you can change those labels um, if anything has been configured incorrectly. You can reverse them uh, here. And so all of this is basically mapping a data layer on top of that high frequency. And then what you see over here is just um, information in, in a few different formats that would be the electrical information of the building. So we have a kind of an overall um, power information that shows you what the, the systems are doing, you know, shows the last time it's connected. Uh, our, our customers really care about high quality data, so we have to show any kind of gaps um, and what the energy is accumulating. This shows you um, kind of the uh, peak demand. So in, you know, in the US and possibly in other um, areas, there's lots of utilities that really charge on two, two bases. One is how much electricity is being consumed under this curve. Uh, but then they also take the highest possible point, and then they charge you a price for that. And so um, this allows you to analyze what those highest peak points are and what components come from that. Um, and then this is a. A portfolio tool that just kind of shows you, like, if you have a very large set of buildings and um, kind of spread out all over the world, uh, you can use this tool to kind of analyze and oops, analyze and benchmark your, you know, how your your buildings are performing relative to each other. Um, <clears throat> and then this this tool is uh, so the the sensor itself is really capable of capturing a lot of precision information, including things like power factor, uh, total harmonic dissonance. So you can see here, you know, like the kitchen outlets or anything specifically which outlet is drawing how much power. Correct. Every, Correct. every little thing. Every little thing. So you can drill down, down to the very littlest detail if you want, or you can zoom up to the highest level if you want. So it's, it's basically um, lets you give like a Google map view at whatever viewpoint actually makes sense for you. Um, so companies um, could utilize this to like, turn off certain equipment at a certain time that's not being used. I mean, exactly. potentially save thousands of dollars right there or oh, hundreds of thousands of dollars even yeah so we've seen we've seen cases like so for some of our customers where we found things that were inefficient charging for their you know automated forklifting or their battery robotic systems um, you know simple changes like that lead to millions of dollars for them uh, we've instituted things to like control exhaust fans and vents and, and pumping so a, a lot of things both reducing carbon footprint and energy and I guess the next step you have artificial intelligence so mm -hmm. Uh, what are you working on to use that artificial intelligence to be able to predict uh, how your energy is being used, or what is AI used? Yeah, so AI is used in a lot of different spots. Uh, um, you know, one of the big differentiating components of our system is that that high frequency information that's coming off those sensors. Um, there's something sort of magical about this eight kilohertz sample rate that we're able to get uh, inside that signal. The AI is picking apart that signal and using that signal to learn what type of equipment is in there. So we can automate the entire process of labeling data. That's one component. Um, then we build this time series historical information that lets us predict what's going to happen in the future, which can be very useful if, you know, as energy prices are changing and fluctuating, if you know what your building's going to do in the future, um, all sorts of different interesting strategies, like how you shape the peak of your building, how you pre-store some energy into the building, all of those things will make big differences in the cost. And that's where our AI comes in as well. Can you predict power outages? 
<laughs> we're working on that, coming out soon. <laughs> yeah, I know, we're experiencing some serious power outages here. And Northern California yeah. is having one of the largest power outages in the country. So. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, well, I'll say that we, why we can't necessarily predict power outages. One of the things that's really important with a power outage is how do you prioritize power? And one of the things that our AI can do is, in fact, identify the highest priority energy loads that are out there, make sure that energy is getting to those systems, whether it's like kidney dialysis machines or hospital, so that a power outage could inconvenience your, you know, watching Monday Night Football, but it's not going to kill your grandma. So that, I think, is at least something that we can start to work on. Okay. Do you have any of these IoT smart meters in China being used right now? We do, we do. We have been testing them in a couple of our customers' facilities who are large manufacturers out in China. Um, we have started testing it with partners in China, and, and we are expecting to launch, actually, at the show with our, our partner in China. So you expect to be in a lot of places in China soon, hopefully Very through soon. CIE, making connections there too, right? Absolutely, absolutely. Great. Okay. Mark Chung, thank you for joining us. Thank you, Mark. Mark New here at NASA Ames Research Center, looking at Invertigris, which sells a smart IoT meter. They're in their early stages, but they're going to be headed to Shanghai soon. Uh, their product can possibly save tens of thousands of dollars, but uh, we will see how their AI uh, turns out to predict things in the future, which is another hot area, smart technology and saving energy. So it's all here at NASA Ames Research Center with Invertigris. Thanks for joining us.